Hello everyone, today is December 23rd, 2022, and this is day 3619 for daily art days for me. Welcome, welcome. Okay, so we worked on this landscape uh, yesterday, and within, you know, a really short period of time, I think only an hour, I was able to work it up so that it... Uh, looks very close to the image itself and today I'm going to focus on the clouds especially all these wispy clouds around here and try and get them to look the way uh, they should look you know uh, still doing some cloud learning basically so let's get right into it not even gonna wait just get into it hey thinker how you doing good morning Good evening, wherever you're located. <laughs> Good afternoon. And one question I have for you is, I have some like music in the background. Is that distracting? Should I just remove it? You know, let me know. If it is, no worries. I'll I'll get rid of it. It only takes a second. And it's like the same music every every day. So, not sure. Not sure if it's really distracting. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do here is I put some kind of coloration in of the white clouds down here, but there's all these edges. And as I look at the, the image, the photograph, I mean, this is just all super soft clouds. So I'm gonna, this is gonna be the base. I'm gonna soften everything out. Yeah, just soften the whole thing out back here. I'm using this uh, full blending soft. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't think this comes with Krita, and I'm not sure where I got it from. You know, it's like the same thing with all brushes we tend to collect. Now, one thing, <clears throat> one thing I am noticing is I need to soften these at a particular angle because the the clouds down here have kind of a horizontal angle so soften them horizontally because I am moving the, the pixels around a bit and up at the top we got this kind of um, angle from top left to to bottom right so we got to make sure that we soften them, and soften them in the right angle it's amazing how different that makes yeah, variety of music may be nice. I think I'll do that. <clears throat> Have to be careful with it, though. <laughs> like, some kind of really hard music, which, you know, I don't mind, but probably not best for a stream. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and soften all the clouds up here, and then I can bring back some edges once I get up there. All right, so the problem I'm seeing is I, I want to have my... <laughs> My artwork right here so I could use it uh, but I can't see the image that well so let's see the image is on top so I'm just gonna bring it straight wait no move the wrong thing no that was weird I guess when yeah when you hold shift you move all layers that's the problem so let, actually, let's do this. I'm just going to make it smaller. Ooh, I distorted it. Got to hold shift so you don't distort your transform. Okay. There we go. All right, let's continue on. I have much more sky now and no idea of where it should break. Oh, well, this image should break in half, so that's okay. Um, I'll just have that up there. I could probably put a, a guide in place as well. Let's see, the height of this is zero to, oh heck, what is the height? Image, image size, 3552. 
So divide that in, in half. 1776. There we go. What's great is when you move a guide, you can see on the top left exactly the pixels that you're at with the guide. I love Krita. <clears throat> it's pretty awesome. All right, back to my brush and let's get going. Just trying to get the shape of these clouds in using a bigger brush than I think. I'm going to put down these shapes over here first. There's a tiny bit of kind of dark coloration that I'm pulling out, but you know, I, I tell you what, I'm, I'm going to stop pulling from the image itself because I made it so small that the, the selection tool is not going to work as well. And that's fine. I can pull out, I mean, I have all the colors I need already down here. And if I pull from my painting, it'll be much more accurate. The most important thing uh, is uh, values, really, especially when you're starting a painting out. When, when you're defining, you know, the, the basis for a painting, you know, get get the values right first. Don't worry too much about the color. I mean, especially digitally, you you can adjust the color so quickly. Um, and Krita, you would just hit Control U, change the uh, transparency. Well. <clears throat> Sorry, ch change the saturation, tra change the hue, change everything, and, you know, with control U. So when you're first drawing out anything that you're doing, whether it's figure, landscape, still life, portrait, get the values right first. Because when the values are right, really color doesn't matter. Give me one second. I have a timer set that is set incorrectly right now. I'm going to reset it. <clears throat> I always take this stream to about 4.30 my time. It's early here. I always like getting up early. I really have to do it for my job because I, I work with people all over the world. I manage individuals all over the world, so I want to be able to talk to them where it's not too late in their area. <clears throat> that. There's so many different little cloud shapes in here that it's getting confusing of what's going on. Gotta focus. What is nice is the very subtle variation that you see in value, um, especially underneath the clouds, like kind of in the shadow area. You can get some really cool, you know, value changes there that can describe the form with just, you know, a really tiny value change. It's really neat. Really cool. Yeah, with those few strokes, I mean, I just defined the, the physical kind of presence of the, that cloud there. I can probably select that one. Let's see if that works. I'm so used to selecting from the image that it's hard to change the way I do things and just select from um, the painting I'm working on. I 
I do like how those clouds get a little bit warmer over here. It's still a gray, but it's getting a, a bit closer to... Well, it's, a, it's a, a gray on the side of reds and yellows. So I just moved it a little bit outside of there. I could probably go to my advanced color wheel and see it a bit better. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a, a very light gray. Um, and if I wanted to cool it off, I could just pull it right over here in this area and have a very cool gray. And then go over here for a warm gray. You can see how it changes. So this is a cool gray where I'm at, and then the top square will really warm things up. So I would highly recommend that if if you're only doing uh, digital, well, I say only, um, if you're doing digital painting, I would recommend that you try out traditional painting as well and vice versa, because um, I've been saying the same for uh, many individuals that if, if you're just doing traditional art, I would definitely suggest um, digital, you know, get into digital. It will inform your traditional painting. Uh, tremendously it really can help you out it's just a tool that you can use to really help help yourself so thinker I hope you're in a part of a country of the country where it's a bit warm I'm assuming you're in the United States <laughs> it's probably not a great assumption but there you go I know the past few days it was cold here, but it's finally warming up today. So I really like, <clears throat> and excuse me, I'm, I'm having trouble with clearing my throat this morning. Not sure what's going on. Um, I'm having a lot of fun with these subtle warm grays that are happening down here in this cloud. That really turns the form. Southwestern Connecticut. I know, you know, my geography is so bad, I'm trying to figure out where Connecticut is. Oh, uh, New England. It's so funny because my wife just applied for a job in Connecticut. <laughs> uh, we may be moving across the country. I like Connecticut. V visited there a couple times. Nice place. It actually has a lot of similarities to the Pacific Northwest. I think that's maybe why, why we kind of liked it. Because of the similarities to Washington State and Oregon. But, you know, I've never lived there, so I could be completely wrong. <laughs> I'm getting pretty detailed with these darn clouds. Now's the time to ask the question. Do I need to get so detailed with these? I mean, at what point is have I learned what I needed to learn from this? And have I described what I needed to describe and move on? I think what I want to do is 
um, blend out these harder edges that the brush makes that I have. First, and then we're gonna move on to this wispy area up here because that's one part of clouds that I haven't really done yet. So not sure of the best way to get those wispy things going on. You can start your streams at 6... Th That's true. Instead of uh, 3.30, it could be at 6.30, Eastern Standard Time. Actually, that would be... Wait, let me see. Would that be right in the middle of my work time? I have to think of, it, think of this because I... My work time starts at 7 here, so it would be 10 a.m. there, so yeah, it would still work. What am I thinking? Yeah, I, just, I would switch over. Yeah, being able to get up later and stay up later it might be kind of nice, especially staying up later. I tell you what, I, I go to bed at 5 so I, can get, so I can get enough sleep and get up early for work and art and all that. And uh, when the wife and I want to do something... Uh, you know, later at night, it my, my sleep schedule gets in the way, way too much. Yeah, I think I think these bottom clouds are really good. Um, I mean, zoomed in here, you can really see you know all the textures and stuff everywhere, and I think that's okay. Oh, the, you know, the one thing I do want to do, I want to go back to my um, brush that I used for the mountains and do a little bit of overlap here on this one because I covered it up with the cloud and I want to bring that back. Yeah, okay, that's good enough. Back to my cloud brush. I'm gonna work on these wispy things going on up here try and get some kind of coloration and that's not what I want I mean to me it looks really warm let's see oh I wonder can I wonder if I can lock this guide because hmm that's the one thing I don't like about Krita is I have a brush right and I have a guide there but if I try and brush over it I I grabbed the guide. So the guide is kind of useless. Uh, those kind of guys, are, you know, it's just not working at all. I'm gonna get rid of it. Go away. All right. I'll just have to remember, or, or not remember the, the, uh, the height of this area, whatever. Yeah, that's kind of the coloration I'm going for. It could be a bit closer to gray. Guy came back. Okay. A bit closer to gray, maybe a bit lighter. Let's check this. Yeah, that's got it. Needs to be a lot bigger. My brush. Yeah, this wispy kind of cloud thing up here is really interesting. Let me see, because I think that brush really lends itself well to the wispiness, but it needs more, it needs to be blended more. Yeah, I think that describes it really well. And then you go back in with maybe a little bit lighter color. Wow, if I could just get some really tiny transitions on this palette, because I'm working in like just very subtle color differences. I need to learn that palette a bit better. That's what it is. And I have this cloud here. Goes kind of at this angle. And then a, a little bit more texture. 
here and here, here. Let's blend those a little bit. And this is interesting. So there's a cloud that is kind of gray. Seth has got a gray look to it. It's darker than that, actually. It's, it's like barely there. It's a, it's a wispy cloud in shadow. And I think it's a lot warmer than that. Oh wow, boy, that changed everything. So I would want to lighten it up just a tiny bit. That's so subtle, I mean, you can barely see it. Yeah, the more I think about it, honestly, I, I really enjoy getting up really early. I mean, when you get up this early, the house is quiet, everyone else is asleep. Actually, you know, you get up early enough and it's like the whole world is asleep. Um, and you just have, you have the entire world to yourself, almost. Okay, that was 30. I'm going to stand up real quick to keep healthy. stretch to keep my back and everything in order that's another thing you know getting these uh, tablets see I, I have a pin display from XP pin which is really nice but uh, there's a tendency to lean forward slightly in your chair which you know creates really bad posture uh, and also it doesn't create a good painting <laughs> you gotta stay back from it really see what you're doing on a broad scale. Especially when it gets this subtle. I'm gonna go straight to gray on this. A little bit lighter. Just these little tiny kind of variations in this cloud that's crazy. And I'm gonna jump in here with a little bit of this wet smudgy brush and move all that around. I'll try that on one of these outside clouds. Oh yeah. You can really pull that paint and move it any way you want. Oh, there's this really cool cloud back here. Let me see, I think I have maybe the right color. It does this kind of pointing to our center of interest. This kind of thing. And then there's another one above it that's a bit warmer. Kind of points in the same direction. Compositional uh, awesomeness right there that we can use. And then I'm, I'm going to go back to that wet brush and I'm going to pull these out. Like the paint out in some places. Need to make it smaller so I get little tiny wispy things. Yeah, nice. There's a little bit of variation there. Okay, then there's an overall larger cloud here. That's really white. It has this kind of dome shape. Let me get a bigger brush. 
this dome shape that comes down a little bit smaller. And again, kind of points to the center of interest, which is nice. It's very, very subtle. Maybe a little bit of these darker blues up here. Wow, there is so much subtlety that I'm working with here. And the more I work on this, the more I'm thinking, okay, I'm, I'm getting too detailed. I don't, I don't think we need to go this far. Um, especially, you know, in something where I'm just trying to learn the ideas of clouds. I really think this might be good, honestly. Let's let's move our uh, reference out of the way. I'll actually transform it to be its size it's supposed to be. Well, I <clears throat> definitely I could continue working on this and get it even closer to the the image, but you know I'm not trying to reproduce a photograph. That's the one thing I'm not trying to reproduce a photograph. So, uh, yeah, I think you know we got through this image really quickly. So let's let's save this. I'm going to save the creative file, and then what I also do is I can save this as a JPEG really quickly. And today is the 23rd, day 3619. I'm super organized with these things. Actually, let me go here and pull out the text for that one. Oh geez, hitting the wrong thing with my stylus. All right, come on. This one I use for my website, so I have to change the size of it. Okay, thank you, Les Argonauts from Pexels, the phot photographer for this. Um, I've learned a lot about clouds because of your awesome photograph. So let's do this. I'm gonna open up a new item, and I. I you know, I'm not sure if I want to continue with clouds or with a mountain because the next thing that I want to figure out is, um, you know, how to texture mountains and things like that. Let's see. Actually, we could probably do a little bit of both with this image here. This is really nice. So we have clouds and we have clouds going over a mountain, a mountain with all of these ridges. And then um, the only thing I don't like about this image is it's it's zoomed in by the photographer and you don't get a, you know, a sense of everything around uh, this mountain. So perspective is a little bit, it was pretty flat here as well. Hmm. Tell you what, let's go back to our original that I've been working on for too long. The original project is where is it? The, the mountain scene I've been working on. Be easier if I just zoom in on all these. Here it is. 
So my original is a pretty dark mountain scene, honestly. Yeah, as I look at this, I, I really don't feel like I want to continue on it at all. <laughs> kind of, my motivation on this painting has died. It was a great idea, but I think I started, I definitely started a composition that was beyond my ability as far as landscape painting and uh, digital format. So. That's fine, let's just let it go. Let's let it go. I, I learned a lot from it. I learned more of what not to do, honestly, in a lot of ways. So, the next thing that we could go on to is I can continue with, yeah, and I think I will, because I, I do have lot of ideas for this epic journey motif I mean you've seen them everywhere where it's basically this this vast landscape with some huge amazing amazing thing in the background and a small figure kind of up front um, contemplating this vast landscape I love that motif and I wanted to I want to continue on with it I feel what I need to do is What I need to do is figure out another composition, something that's easier. And I'm in my folder right now where I have lots of images I've collected from ArtStation, from artists that I love that have the similar kind of motif and have the stylization that I like. So I think that would be the next, kind of looking at what these artists can do because they're all fantastic and learning from them, Le learning from a modern day master, really. And a lot of these, uh, you know, I would consider at that level. So I just need to pick out one of these. Sorry, do sorry for doing this on the stream, kind of ended one in the middle of a stream and um, selecting another. So this is kind of, you know, this is what we artists do is uh, we're constantly searching for ideas, constantly trying to figure out things, you know, what to work on next, what, uh, what's interesting. I don't know if you guys have seen uh, lately, but on ArtStation, there's a lot of things going on with AI art and um, a lot of backlash because these AI generators like Midjourney and Stable Diffusion and Dolly and all that, they pull images from the internet and they're pulling a lot of imagery from ArtStation because it's so amazing. There's so many amazing artists there. And we have all, uh, you know, just millions of people pulling from their work and generating um, art and calling it their own based, you know, on what um, what images they pull from ArtStation. It's something that, you know, I have really kind of mixed feelings about because I can see you know, AI generated art, or at least the generators themselves, as wonderful tools to use to for idea generation and for motivation. Uh, but for any of those tools, you know, obviously they're going to be used nefariously because the first thing people do is like, okay, well, how can I make money from this? And I can understand a lot of these really professional artists, they don't want their art to be stolen like that and to be spread so wide and so easily accessed that they become obsolete. It's like, well, why would I ask you to paint this when I could just get it generated for nothing? Yeah, it's kind of scary in some ways, but 
it's it's still like it's like the photograph the photograph came in <clears throat> and really got good around you know early 1800s i believe i can't remember the exact date and um there was a lot of changes in the art world at that time the and a lot of changes for the good because at that point we were still doing art that was just about trying to copy what we see and trying to be able to represent you know this kind of optical representation and then the photograph came in and it's like well we don't need to do that anymore because the photograph is doing it faster and better than we could ever do so <clears throat> the change was that we went more towards a narrative towards feeling towards emotion so in try instead of trying to depict things exactly the way they are like the photograph was doing we we're trying to depict the the emotion the feeling of um yeah the feeling of the landscape the feeling of whatever we're looking at yeah i really like this one this is shin jong hoon again actually he's the one uh, i pulled from for the original this uh this painting down here it's really tiny but uh for that previous one and i think what i'm going to do is let me open this one here and wow on a small scale when i was looking at it as a thumbnail it looked completely different uh it didn't have Man, I thought it would be a completely different image, but this is cool. This is really cool. So I think what I'm going to do is study from this, okay? Uh, I'm going to study from his painting. Oh, and this, you know, as I'm talking about AI art, right? Uh, this is what people don't want to do, right? This is why, uh, you know, lazy individuals, uh, you know, jump into AI generation as artists. Like, if you're an artist and you're like, Okay, you know, just I'll just go generate something uh, instead of painting it, instead of learning how to paint it. You know, that's pretty lazy. Um, so set next to one of your favorite artist's pieces, right? And um, paint it, paint from it. Learn from what they were able to do and then make your own, you know? That's so much more empowering, really, if you can, if you could pull out the techniques and principles and then with that, you, you know, learn your own style. You're like, oh, okay, well, I can take the, these uh, little ideas that I pulled from here and uh, make it my own in some way. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a space on the side of this. That's the exact same size, so I just basically doubled the, the width. And I always like working from gray, at least on my oil paintings. But what I've figured out in, from doing this in the past is um, it's sometimes faster if I take some ideas from this right away and my background um, reflects that instead of just throwing a gray in. So what I do see, you know, in a general sense, when I kind of squint down, maybe I blur you know, let's do this. Let's blur out the image. Take this, copy, paste. And let's do a filter over top of it. Let's do a ga Gaussian blur of maybe 10 pixels. Ooh, that's 100 pixels. Wow. In Photoshop, 10 pixels goes a long way. Oh, this must be a really high resolution. So that's what's happening. So let's do a Gaussian blur on that, right? Um, and... You know, kind of see the general motif. Actually, let's do it even more. Let's take the blur to 11. <laughs> For all the Spinal Tap fans out there. Um, yeah. Now, this is kind of interesting. If, if I started out the painting like this, you know, this kind of generalized color, which, you know, the... <clears throat> the the easy and lazy way is to would be to just use this on the right side. No, I'm not doing that. Uh, and actually, I may challenge myself here to um, 
Maybe not select colors. That would be a challenge. Oh my gosh. And try and match them. It would take a lot longer for this painting. But what would I learn from it? I would learn this darn color wheel a lot better. And to be able to, you know, do a much more subtle selection on things. Let's do this. Okay, I'm gonna undock this guy. And I have gamut masks out, but I never use it, so... Settings, dockers, let's turn off gamut masks. I believe there's multiple color select selectors. So this is the artistic color selector, and the other one is the advanced color selector. And then also there's a right click. So if you right click, you get this really cool menu that comes up, uh, and you can do color selection on it. Let me see how well that works with a stylus. So I'm here, I just want to make a tiny change. Oh, those are all the colors that I chose and, and used before. It's kind of, I don't know what that, the problem I'm having with these color selectors is I want to make some tiny changes within the color selection I have, but I can't do that because the stylus, when I put it down, it, it, it jumps all over the place. I have to make it this huge in order to get really subtle differences. But the one thing I don't know about the advanced color selector is these three bars down here and how they used them. So that might be something I do right now. Well, I think let's do that. Let's learn that. Um, digital colors mixer. I have no idea what that is. I've never seen that docker. Yeah. I'd, I got that open, but I don't know where it's at. Okay, I'll just keep it open. I thought there was another uh, colors mixer. Onion skins, patterns, quick settings docker, recorder, small color selector. Oh, it's opening up in my other window. That's what's happening. So I have a digital color selector, a small color selector. I wonder. The small color selector is kind of nice. Let's say I want a, a bluish green. I'm right here. And then I can go, you know, as saturated as I want. See, I'm, I'm watching the artistic color selector, how it stays along that green line and it goes out to saturation and then I can go all the way to gray there. And this one's a lot smaller so I can change the value yet saturate it, desaturate. Huh. Okay, let's check the smaller changes. Let's say I want, I want a warm color like with those clouds, but I want it really close to gray. Really close to gray. Well, then it would be over here, Chris. Not at the top. Actually, I think that's working really well. I don't know what the digital colors mixer does. I'll have to look at that one later. Maybe a little lighter for that warm gray. Okay, I'm liking the small color sec selector a lot. Let me see if there's any other dockers for color selection. <laughs> Look, I got stable diffusion in here. Okay, no. Um, let's do this. Oh, I'm on a airbrush. I don't want to be on an airbrush right now. As not, it doesn't have near enough flow that I want. Actually, we're going to do my block brush. It's just nothing but opaque paint that gets put down. Okay, there's that color. Now, 
What does these three sliders do? Let me take this one all the way to the right and see what happens. Like next to nothing. It is not changing any other aspect. Oh, it does. Okay, I have to let go of it for it to change. Oh, this is changing the hue. The top one changes the hue. So, let's try this. Let me go to a direct, just gray. Um, would it change the hue of a gray? No, it doesn't. Okay, let's go right in the center of this red here. So this will go closer to yellow. This will go closer to magenta. Oh, it's kind of a range. So if I select right in the center of here, I can go warmer. I can go cooler. That's actually pretty nice. So this is like a warm, cool slider. That's, that's pretty nice. So if I'm out here in a gray, okay, and let, let's throw that gray down. So this is my gray. It's pretty dark. And let's say, oh, that's that's too cool. Let's go all the way to the right on this. And I'll have one that's warmer. It's the same exact value. Wow, that value. You can't even tell. It's like barely different. It's the same exact value, but it's warmer. This is exciting. I just, <laughs> no one on the, on the planet would think this is exciting but me. Okay, and then we go cooler. See what that does to it. Oh, yeah, it's a bit more blue. Okay, okay, that's that's fairly fantastic, I would say. So this is our warm cool adjustment. All right, let's go back to that gray that I picked. So it resets when you pick on the the color wheel itself. So and, and I'll put that gray down one more time. So over everything. And hopefully you can see this cuz maybe I'll, I'll make my brush just massive. Because these are so subtle. You would have to see that. Okay, let's see what the other color slider does. Ooh, intensity. It's definitely an intensity color slider. And so, it stayed with the same hue, same exact hue, but to the right, I made it more intense. To the left, straight to gray. But it also changed the value, as you can see it it changes that intensity, but it also affects the value. You see my value slider here on the artistic color selector. It's going all the way up. So that could be confusing because if I go, you know, maybe a bit more intense, it's, it got, looks like it got lighter. Maybe it didn't. Let's see. What we can do is put a filter. No, we'll do it over over top of it. So we can add a colorize mask to this. And then if I go in, oops, and I edit. How do you edit the colorize mask? I don't know why that is. That's really weird. I, obviously, I don't know colorize mass very well. I thought that was the type of mask where you could just change everything gray. Filter mask. That's what I wanted. Adjust uh, hue saturation value adjustment adjustment. So S H S or H S V or H S L. So it's a filter mask, and then I can take the saturation all the way down to zero. Yeah, see that value changes there. I accidentally selected a gray, so let, let me go back and brush. 
here. Oh, I'm on the colorized mask, so it all goes to gray. So if I change the second slider, it increases the intensity, yet it also increases the... Um, one second. Um, I got to report somebody that's spamming my... Okay, got rid of that. Thanks for interrupting me, jerk. <laughs> so when I change the intensity, it <clears throat> also changes the value, which I don't like. Maybe I just want to change the intensity without changing the value. All right, so let's go back to our original color. Do a selection on this. Just a, like a pinkish, a gray magenta, really. And let's check out the other slider. So when I take it all the way to the right, wow, that just goes right to white. Yeah, this is weird. This is also changing the value. So it's getting lighter, but well, it's changing the value, obviously, but it's also changing the, the saturation as well. So I went all the way to zero saturation, just basically white. But if I... So I saturated it a little bit, but I made it darker. Now that's kind of disappointing. The first slider is, is really nice because it only change, changes one aspect of the color which is the hue itself in a very small way. But the other two changes two aspects of color, which is saturation and value. Hmm. I want those small adjustments where I can just change value. Or just change the color. For example, Let's go back to our original color selection. So I'm at this gray here. And all I want to do is stay within the same um, saturation of this magenta gray. But I want to make it a little bit darker, let's say. Now with the artistic color selector, that's really easy. I mean, over here, I, I have this huge bar. Oh. Oh. It even changes the saturation too, as I see on the advanced color picker. Interesting. On the small color picker though, it seems to go up and down specifically, you know, just straight up and down. That's really interesting. So maybe you can't change one without the other. Huh, is that the thing? If I, I can change the hue and keep the same value and saturation, no problem, over here. But if I want to change the value, make, make it really light. Did I change the hue as well? Well, I didn't change the hue. Well, yeah, the, the hue did change slightly. Uh, but it got a little bit more saturated. I don't think much to matter, honestly. Maybe I should pick out... Let's go with yellow. Let's go with something right in the center. It's a really ugly kind of greenish yellow, but that's okay because we're just learning something here. So this is in the center of, just about in the center of every single um, color wheel. It's a medium saturation and this yellow hue, yellow greenish hue it looks like. 
and let's go closer to green. Same hue, closer or er, closer to red. So I'm just changing the hue there. Let's say I want to saturate it more and desaturate it. Let's try this. So for the advanced color wheel, let's desaturate it by 50% on that little bar. <clears throat> and I'm gonna put that down. And then I'm gonna go back to the exact color and I'm gonna desaturate it by 50% uh, as close as I can get on the artistic color wheel and see what I get. Much lighter. Back to the original color. Uh, let's desaturate here which would be right there. And I get the exact same as the artistic color wheel. Hmm. The advanced color selector is doing something different that I don't understand. Whenever it desaturates or um, changes the value, it does it at an angle across the triangle here. And I bet you there's, you know, some kind of very color scientific reason why that happens and I'll need to read on it but I think what I figured out is this color selector this guy here is the easiest one for me to jump around in in a very subtle way especially if I make it larger I wonder if I can dock this on the right side that would be a good place for it Actually, let me try and dock it where I had before. See if it's still useful here. I guess what I could do is really test it on the cloud painting I was working on. Oh, this is gonna be fun. Let's go back to the brush. And I select this white. And then I'll put that down real quick. And then select another color. And let's say that I want, you know, these are really subtle. And I want something a little, just a little lighter than what I have. And then a little grayer, maybe. Yeah, I, I have so much more ability to select on that. Get rid of that. Save the file again. All right. Back to the Shin Jong Hun's painting. Delete this. I'm going to remove these masks. That's shift delete for each one. There we go. All right, that's my favorite color picker. For now, <laughs> you know, it'll change, right? Um, so back to this piece and I want a very soft, thickly opaque brush. So I know this guy is very opaque, but can we soften it out? And I'm going way past my normal time on here because this is just a lot of fun. Um, so let's see. I'm using this big blocky thing. Let's change it to a predefined soft shape. Maybe this one? Nope, not soft enough. I'll probably end up pulling out a you know, the airbrush. There you go. Just go to the auto and then I can select Gaussian, circle, soft circle. Softness goes down. Is that with pressure? Ah, there we go. 
It's so soft you can't see it. <laughs> wow. Let's not mess with that right now. I'm trying to do too much at once. Let's just go to the airbrush and oh wow, the flow and opacity is at 100%. Um, I need to change the... the opacity on this so I can get to a higher opacity quicker. without pressing so freaking hard. Or maybe I just change the opacity like that. There we go. I don't want to save this one now. Delete. Okay. Um, I've already selected this purple. I think it needs to go closer to this kind of blue. I'm, I'm going to go with trying to choose the color that's that's there through trial and error this is wow this is going to take forever okay let me select this i never thought it would be that type of purple you know it's all relative my goodness it's all relative so if i select over here okay then that gets really blue okay on the stream i guess it's not the best to do this to to try and uh, just judge all the colors by looking at them. So basically, what I'm trying, what I want to do here, and I haven't explained this correctly, maybe was um, I'm establishing some background, just some generalized kind of background. And what I usually do is I will um, just pick a gray color and then work on top of that and the reason why I like you know the, the like a 50% gray is because it doesn't affect any color you put on top of it it really gets out of the way um, so I could select a you know I have a gray and when I put a yellow on top of it it looks exactly like that yellow I, I see a lot of artists uh, traditional artists they start with just blank white canvases it's the hardest surface to judge a color on um, and then other artists, you know, they, you know, you get good enough at judging color and you can start with like yellow, orange, purple, no matter what canvas you start with, you can start with these crazy colors, um, and let that inform your painting in some way. I always like starting with gray because, well, it gets, it just gets out of the way. It doesn't affect my judgment as much. But for this, what I've kind of been learning is that, um, starting out a digital painting in a lot of ways it's it's better to start with some kind of color in the background that is a generalization overall of everything Oof, my computer is really churning on this i think the 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 smudging brush strokes are happening a half a second or so after i do them this must be a massive image i'll probably have to look at it change it so it's a little bit faster so there that's the the generalized idea of this painting let me see file save as put it in projects and I'm going to create a new project. I call it Learning from Digital Masters. And Shin, uh, what's his name? Shin Jong Hoon from ArtStation will be the first. 
Yeah. Well, that took forever to save. Yeah, <clears throat> it's 7,400 across. Go away. We can cut that down to 4,000. It should be fine. Let's save that. Two, one. I mean, even at 100%, that's what it looks like. Okay. Thank you, Thinker, again, for joining the stream. Um, and anybody else that kind of jumped in and left? Thanks for looking at my stream for a few seconds. That's totally cool. I'm going to call this a stream. End it here. And then I'm going to get on to my oil painting. Um, I'm not showing... I, I do have a stream set up for oil painting, but I'm not showing that because I eventually want to, it to be a tutorial that I want to sell because it's huge. Um, but you guys will know when that that goes out, which hopefully will be next month sometime. But I have all kinds of ideas for tutorials for painting and oil painting supplies and all kinds of stuff that come into my channel um, in January. I already have uh, videos scheduled all the way up until the 10th of January, so on the 17th I'll have something brand new out that's going to be different. Yeah. Alright, thanks guys, and I will see you tomorrow.